Hi guys, I'm Cal, and this is Cal Paul Woodcraft. If you can hear any funny noises in the background, that'll be Alfie. He's sat here in the living room with me while I'm doing my intro, and we'll get on with the intro now. And Alfie, you try and be quiet for Daddy and play with your toys, yeah? Not too loud, Dad. Confession time, I've just had to banish Alfie into the kitchen because he was overpowering the intro. So he'll, I'll get him back in in a minute. Uh, so this is what we're going to be building then guys. It's a mid-century modern uh, side table, well my version of. I built it with reclaimed timber. I'll show you some of the bits of timber that I used in a moment. It's plywood and a little bit of pine. We've got a nice sliding drawer. Well, it's a tray, it doesn't have drawer runners. And I put a bevel on there. It's got two compartments for storing ornaments in, and there's this portion here in the middle to give it the illusion of the top pieces floating on top. Uh, the space on top for a nice lamp, which by the way is next week's video, and I've stained it all in a nice walnut stain. So we'll get on with the video. I'll show you some of the bits of timber that we used prior to it looking nice and finished, and then we'll crack on with cutting everything down at the table saw to its final dimensions. To do these 45 degree bevel cuts I have to take the dust hood off and I've set a stop block up here and we're just going to make the cuts now. First one's done. One thing I will say when you're doing these mighty joints guys, take a lot of time setting up your mighty saw, making sure that it's cutting really precisely at 90 degrees and then when you put the bevel on over at 45 degrees, set that up really accurately as well because this is going to pay dividends later on when you come to glue up and you don't want to be filling big horrible gaps in your mate as you want the smallest gaps possible if not at all. Before doing the final glue up I lay everything out in a dry run, I use some frog tape to attach everything together, spin it round, make sure all the joints look nice and you can normally tell at this stage when you frog tape them all together if there's any gaps. If there is you can deal with them then, if not you can crack on with the glue up. I then put a generous bead of glue in all the mitres before assembling the box. As my joints aren't the strongest of joints, make sure you cover every last bit of surface area within the joint of the glue. I then switch out the frog tape for the masking tape as this is quite a bit cheaper. It's not strong but it's great to use as a clamping system. I then wipe any excess glue off with a damp rag as I don't want this to affect the wood stain and dye later. I then add a few clamps just to pull the joints tightly together. 24 hours later I pop the clamps off and the tape and I notice a bit of the veneer has come loose so I use a bit of super glue and activator to fix that. I thought I'd show you this one because this is this is probably the worst mitre of the bunch and you can see there's a little teacher gap there probably about I don't know it's less than probably about half a mil I think but we're just going to do a bit of bearing on there so I'm just going to put a bit of glue on my finger not too much at all because I don't want it to affect the stain when I apply that later get the screwdriver and just roll it over the edge on both sides to try and close that gap up and get some 120 grit sandpaper rub that down until all the glue's gone residue and that should have filled any last remaining little gaps and there you are good mitre I was going to put a face frame on these boxes but when uh, my wife looked at them she really liked the uh, end grain, so all I'm going to do is find any voids, which is hardly any, and just pop a bit of filler in there. She likes the, the look of the end grain on this plywood, and it has got some nice colours in. It looks like it's all different types of hardwood, so I'll just pop a bit of filler in them. 
As mitre joints are the strongest, I decided to add some splines to the mitres to make them stronger. So you can see I'm setting up the jig up and I'm going to use my biscuit joint there to cut the holes for the splines. And then I'll move over to the table saw and I've got a little bit of mahogany and I'll set that up to the dimensions of what the biscuits are, which is about three and a half millimetres. And I'll cut them there and then add them as the splines. Using a combination of the table saw fence and the feather board as a stop block, this enables me to be able to cut the fin strips I need for the splines. I use the tenon saw to cut the splines to length and then putting plenty of glue in the mortises, I hammer away the splines into position and leave them to dry. Then use a flush cut saw to flush these off and then sand them down so they're nice and smooth and level with the rest of the box. When sanding the splines down flush with the rest of the box just be careful not to sand through the veneer. Next I take a referential measurement of the divider what the what the tray is going to sit on and then I cut it over at the mitre saw and then Put some pocket holes on the underside what are not going to be seen and then I can later fill these with some 9mm dowels. To construct the draw I'm using these off cuts of pine that I had left over and I'm just ripping them down to size on the table saw. For the draw front I'm going to be using this piece of pine but I don't want these knots in here so I'm going to cut them knots off. And then I'll come back and get referential measurement and get that perfect. If there's any questions you'd like to ask guys, don't be shy to ask me in the comments below. If you've got any constructive advice, also you can give that in the comments. And I always converse with everyone in the comments. Uh, every, every single comment will get answered, no doubt. I then go back over to the table saw and I put a 6mm groove in all the pieces of the drawer so I can slide in the bottom of the drawer piece. I do this in two passes because the care for the blade is about three millimeters or just under. For the back piece this just gets cut off directly where the groove should be as the bottom panel slides over the top of this as you'll see in a moment. The way I construct the drawer or tray then is just with glue and brad nails. Love you. Love you, bye. I clamp up the tray making sure everything's nice and square and then I pop three or four brads into each glue joint. Next I countersink all the brads below the surface and I fill these with a bit of wood filler. The front of the drawer is going to be painted so we don't need to worry about seeing these. Once everything's sanded and smooth and painted they'll be totally invisible. The back of the drawer I'm not too worried about at all. I then slide the tray into position and then fire a few brads into the back which will hold it there permanently. Next I use some dark walnut wood stain and this is ethanol based and it's really good because you can apply it and leave it on for a few minutes the longer you leave it on the darker it goes and then you can wipe off the excess if you wipe it off quicker you'll get a lighter turn and if you leave it on a little bit longer you'll get a darker turn it also doesn't go blotchy like the water based stuff or raise the grain I had some hairpin legs what was left over from a, a cancelled order and I thought these would look great on this, saved me building some legs so I applied the legs. I put the tray into position, I put a couple of spaces in there and then put the divider on top and just secure, secure this with the pocket hole screws. I wanted to make the drawer look a little bit more interesting so I put a 45 degree chamfer on all the edges and then when I put the stop block behind the drawer, I left it so the drawer was just protruding the distance of the chamfer and I thought that would give it a really unique modern look. 
whole piece got four coats of acrylic varnish and this is a quick drying varnish so you can apply several coats in a day. I denibbed at 400 grit in between coats and then washed down, cleaned and recoated. Before painting the front of the drawer, I marked out the centre and drilled the hole for the handle so I didn't scuff any of the paintwork at the end. I found this little brass handle that I had lying around and I thought I'd use that. I then applied two coats of this matte duck egg paint. I used the frog tip to seal the edges so I had nice clean lines, denibbed in between coats and then applied the last coat. As you can see here the frog tape really does give a nice clean edge and that's why I prefer it over normal masking tape. I then gave a couple of coats of acrylic spray varnish and then last but not least I put the drawer handle on and then when I took the tray over and slid it in and out of its space it was just sticking a little bit so I just give it a real light denib on all the varnished and painted surfaces and rubbed on some of this clear furniture wax and then it was lovely and smooth. And that's the side table complete. Is there anything I'd do differently then? Uh, well, there was one thing I was a bit concerned about and that was the, the grain. The grain on this runs from the front to the back or vice versa on all the sides of each box. And I was gonna have the grain going running around that way uh, but in the end the deciding factor was the amount of material that I was working with as it was reclaimed so that meant I had to really build it the way I have. Uh, the, the pros to that is I've got nice clean mitre joints with no tear out but there was a little bit of tear out as you decided to fix them with some super glue on the on the edges but it's all turned out really well. My favourite part of the build is this little tray. I love this little profile on the edge, this chamfer and how it looks with the duck egg finish and the little brass handle. I also like the, the dark walnut wood die. I think that's turned out brilliant. No blotchiness at all, it looks great. Uh, yeah, so in general, I'm really pleased with how it's gone. If you've enjoyed the content and today's video, uh, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment or reply to all the comments. And if you'd like to support the channel financially, you can do that for a one-off donation on PayPal, or you can use the Patreon system, which is brilliant. It's going to benefit the channel no end in saving up for microphones and uh, cameras and PC equipment and hopefully tools in the future. And if you can't do that, no worries at all. But if you can, brilliant. And next week's video is going to be this little lamp on the top so I'll catch you next weekend and have a good week and I'll see you later bye